Good morning everybody and welcome to another Sandia Mountain Natural History Center quick trip. This morning we're going to talk a little bit about this green stuff on the trees. Now a lot of people confuse this with moss. It's not actually moss. It's something called lichen. Lichen until very recently was misunderstood. We used to think that lichen was just a combination of algae and fungus growing together in a symbiotic relationship. We now know that it's a lot more than that. It can be multiple fungi uh, living with a couple different uh, algas, or it can actually be partly based on a relationship of a uh, type of bacteria. So it's a lot more complex than we thought. But the important thing is, is that it's a symbiotic relationship meaning that one part can't live without the other part. But we're not going to talk a whole lot today about the natural history of lichen. We're going to try and make a dye out of it to color uh, clothing, uh, as was done by uh, the way the people that used to use this lichen uh, traditionally uh, for generations. So we have uh, multiple different types of lichen here. We have uh, crustios, uh, we have folios, we even have uh, some antler lichen back here. But the one that we're going to use the most is some of that folios lichen, uh, like this one. And the common name for this is bushy beard lichen. So we're going to collect a whole bunch of this. And we're going to see if we can make a traditional dye out of it. Let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do to make our dye is we're just going to cut this off because we don't want to get a lot of the bark and other parts of the tree uh, in, the, in our dye solution. And we're just going to collect a whole bunch of this. All right, everybody. So we're back in the shop and this process is going to be hopefully pretty simple. We're going to try and turn this white t-shirt uh, a different color using lichen. So we collect. Well, we got our water boiling here. Now we're going to start adding our lichen. Some of you may be wondering what color we expect this to be. Uh, from what I've seen, uh, yellow actually. We're, hope, we're trying to make a yellow dye. Uh, it would seem like green would be more obvious, but we're thinking yellow. So, just... All right, we've been boiling and simmering our lichen here for about an hour or so. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our t-shirt. Hopefully the camera picks up that that's a nice, new, clean, white t-shirt. We're going to put it in our lichen, uh, let it simmer a little bit longer, and see what happens. Uh... All right, everyone. Thanks for sticking with us. So we soaked the t-shirt in the lichen, uh, the boiled lichen, for really about 12 hours. It sat overnight. And then we uh, set the t-shirt out to dry, and this is our result. So the lichen definitely did change the color because here's the, uh, here's the lichen one, and here's a clean t-shirt. So it did change the color, but I don't want to call it a complete failure. Uh, in science, failures are just advancements in knowledge. And we have advanced our knowledge of lichen as a dye in that it's not the best. But it's still fun to get out and experiment. It was fun to collect the lichen. It was fun to try the experiment. And it was fun to learn something new. So I uh, can't really call it a failure on that level. And it did change the t-shirt to 
a kind of a dirty yellow color. So it did work as a dye. Um, it just didn't work as well as we hoped. So thanks for joining us and I hope you will see you on the next video.